Yo, what's up everyone? It's Gad here, and in this new series, we're going to be making a 2D racing game. And I haven't decided yet if it's going to be like a hill climb racing game, where you've got the petrol when you need to get as far as possible, or if it's going to be a racing game against bots. So let me know in the comments which one you want to see, and we'll have a little vote and see which one we're going to make. And I'm excited to show you in this course, it's not going to be the, the simplest course to follow along with, because we're going to be creating a realistic engine and using torque curves and gear ratios to determine the RPM that the wheel is going to be. So there's one thing to note when you're following along with this course. Try and make sure that all the values that you use for your vehicle are as accurate as possible. So for, like, for the weight of the wheels and then the size of the bike and the overall weight of the bike and things like that, just to make it as realistic as possible. So if that sounds interesting to you, just stick around and we'll carry on with this video. Alright, as you can see here, I've got a brand new 2D project, and then all I've done is drop in this Supermoto folder. And then you can see in here, I've got an image for a bike, and then the front wheel and the rear wheel. And I'm going to be setting up the motorbikes in this series first, and then going on to the cars, just because a motorbike is basically the same as a car, but just more complex. And so now with this in our scene, we want to get the scale right. So you can see these squares here are a meter each. So you just want to line up your bike with the beginning of one and then instead of changing the scale on the transform you want to click on the actual image in the assets and then change this pixels per unit and then so the higher you make this number the smaller the image is going to be and then obviously the smaller you make the number the bigger the image is going to be. So just play around with that until you get the scale right and when you've done that we can go ahead and actually get up set in this vehicle. So first of all, I'm just going to move the wheels into the correct spaces. And with that done, you can see that the wheels are in front of the bike and I want them behind. So if I select both of them here in the sprite renderer under order in layer, if I set this to minus one, then they're both going to be behind this bike. And then also what we're going to need for both these wheels is going to have a circle collider and then also a rigid body on both of these. And it's going to be a rigid body 2D. And for now we're not going to change any of this, we're just going to set it up and then show you what we need to do after. And then so on the Supermoto frame, what I'm going to do is add in a Polygon Collider 2D. And then after that I'm going to add in two wheel joint 2Ds. So create one and then add another one. And so you can see up here where it says connected rigid body. So for this first wheel joint I'm going to add in the front wheel. And then the second one I'm going to add in the rear wheel. And then make sure you've got Gizmo selected on your scene view. And you can see this anchor point is in the middle here, which isn't where it's supposed to be. So if we go onto the first wheel joint here, and then just change this anchor point a little bit until it's off of the center. And then we can drag it, and we want to drag it to this middle point here. And then same again for this other wheel joint 2D, I'm going to change the anchor a little bit. And then grab it and put it to the center of the wheel. And now that's all done, we can actually test this, but we don't have a ground. So to make that, what we're going to be using in this series is this 2D object. Go under Sprite Shape and then go to an open shape. Actually, not an open shape, we want a closed shape. So a 2D object and then, what's it, Sprite Shape, closed shape. There we go. And you can see we can't see the wheels. And that's because this order in layer is zero, so we're going to set this to minus two. And then on the gizmos, I'm also going to make these icons smaller because it doesn't need to be that big. And then so what we can do to create a map with this is if we click on this edit spline button, you click that, you can see you've got these points which we can drag around. But also in between the points, we can add new points to drag around there. And then also there's these lines on either side to change the curve. So you can see you can get a lot of control out of these. So I'm just going to quickly just drag this up along here, drag this over here, and then create a little hill just so we can test it out. And then finally, before we test this out, I'm going to grab both the wheels and then put them as a child as the frame, of the frame, sorry. And then grab the frame, put it up in the air a little bit just so we can watch this when we press play. And then as you can see, it goes straight through the ground and that's because on the, the sprite shape, we need to add a polygon collider. And you can see when we add the collider, it, we get this new collider tab on the sprite shape controller. And we can leave this all the same unless you want to change the quality to be high, medium or low, which is just the kind of the resolution of the collider. So now we press play. 
you can see the wheels of the suspension isn't very stiff and if I drag this up again let it bounce that the the suspension's really soft and the wheels don't actually return to the center and there's a few reasons for this first of all on the frame these wheel joint 2Ds if we change the frequency to be 7 you can see that now it rests at the center but if we go back and drag this up in the air it's actually not too bad but when we get the frame and we add the mass to it and we want this to be 150 you can see it's just it's all the way at the bottom there and that's because on these wheels we want to set the mass to be something like 10 there you go now we drag this up and drop it it's got a realistic weight and then also the suspension's looking good so that's everything for this video i know it's a short one but we're just getting this set up for the next one and then let me know of any suggestions you want in this course or any other series you want to see me make and i'll speak to you in the next one bye